Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, Embry-Riddle UAV Storm Chaser Team completes first remote control flight. USMC approves drone operator insignia for uniforms. And Malawian students successfully build and test UAS with Virginia Tech. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Kicking off a series of tests for its capstone project, the UAV Storm Chaser team at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University completed its first remote-controlled flight of a UAV on November 17th. Considered a huge success, the RC flight was used to demonstrate all the communication components of the UAV linking together properly, to calibrate the motors and motor controller, to get flight time, and to go through the process of setting up all of the parameters in the mission planner. The UAV Storm Chaser team is one of five teams within Embry-Riddle's Electrical Computer Software and Systems Engineering Capstone class which is a two-semester class that provides students in their final year with project experience that mirrors what they will experience in their respective fields of work. As one of the projects presented this year, the UAV Storm Chasers project addresses the current technique used to obtain weather measurements in severe storms, which requires a pilot to fly directly into the eye of the storm to release a drop sonde. The drop sonde is used to collect various measurements from the storm, which it then sends back to the plane as it drops it into the ocean where it degrades over time. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Six representatives of government, business and knowledge institutions, including the Netherlands Aerospace Center, signed an agreement at Groningen Airport Eeld last week to perform out-of-sight drone flights. These beyond-visual line-of-sight flights are important to enable a variety of different societal and economic applications that necessitate drones covering a greater distance. The experiment is dedicated to delivering parcels of medicines to Shir Monik Og, one of the West Frisian Islands. Kinetic Target Systems has introduced a new service to the Royal Canadian Navy by emulating the thread posed by large naval vessels by small multi-rotor drones. The live demonstration was carried out in early November 2017 from a Halifax-class frigate under the $8.5 million Canadian Unmanned Targets Repair Overhaul and Engineering Contract, awarded to QTC in 2015. Big Bend Community College in Moses Lake, Washington has received accreditation for its UAS program from the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. The accreditation means that students can receive an associate's degree of applied sciences in the program beginning in January. Piedmont Virginia Community College will hold the second annual Public Safety Unmanned Aerial Systems Conference for first responders and public safety professionals. The 2018 Public Safety UAS Conference will be held at King Family Vineyard in Crozy, Virginia from Monday, March 5th through Wednesday, March 7th, 2018 and is intended for law enforcement, public safety, search and rescue, emergency services, and disaster relief professionals. The University of Maryland UAS test site has acquired 11 Tiger Shark UAS, which adds to the test site's fleet of more than 40 aircraft. It will ultimately help enhance and expand long-range testing efforts. Some of the Tiger Shark's characteristics include its ability to carry up to 100 pounds of payload, being able to stay airborne for up to seven hours, and ability to operate as high as 14,000 feet. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. The status of military drone operators is about to be upgraded. The U.S. Marine Corps has authorized a drone operator insignia that can be affixed to the uniforms of enlisted operators. The approval was one of several published by the service in late November. It is part of a DoD effort intended to recognize the growing importance of the new community. The USMC has relatively few authorized insignia, according to reports. They are normally reserved for elite fields such as EOD technicians, parachutists, aviators, combatant divers, and scuba divers. The final design has not been finalized, according to Marine Corps spokesman Captain Christopher Harrison. 
According to the message, fielding information for the badge will be published separately. Virginia Tech and Malawian teams have used a fully autonomous UAS to conduct tests at the UNICEF Drone Testing Corridor in Kasungu, Malawi, which opened back in July. Virginia Tech says that the flights by a fully autonomous aircraft designed in Mechanical Engineering's Unmanned Systems Lab set several records in Malawi, including the longest cross-country UAS flight, the first flight of an aircraft created by Malawians, and the first delivery of a payload from a health clinic. On November 9th, the UAS named Echosaur achieved a first flight milestone when it flew 19 kilometers from the Go Goat Health Clinic to the Kansungu Airport. The UAS, which is built to carry small packages for medical supplies and diagnostics, carried a simulated package of medical supplies during the flight. Echosaur was built by a team of Malawian students from the Malawi University of Science and Technology. Virginia Tech graduate students Zach Standridge and James Donnelly, along with Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering Kevin Koshersberger, supervised the Malawian students while they built the aircraft. As a part of a two-day fabrication workshop, 13 students from across the country built five Echosaur UAS. After a day of flight testing, an Echosaur UAS was launched to conduct its beyond line-of-sight delivery flight in front of hundreds of villagers. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at avsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.